Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to the second shelf and to the very last video of 2023 talking about the very last books of 2023 because it's New Year's Eve. I mean, morning of New Year's Eve, but when this video will go up, at least in Europe, it will be already beginning of the evening because I upload always at six o'clock on Sunday. So this is a reason reads, but you know, different because it's the last books. Um, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six books to talk to you about the last books that I finished um, this year. As you know, if you follow my channel, I always want to enter the new year with a clean slate. So um, I'm reading magazines today <laughs> because I'm not going to start a book. I will start the first book next year, tomorrow. Anyway, um, the two books I want to start with are the two classics from my Classics uh, 2023 list that I did manage to finish. Um, if you remember, I picked 12 and then I fell off the wagon in September after book eight or something. And in the end, I finished 10. And for next year, as you know, I decided to scale it down and do six which is more manageable, I think. But anyway, I finished these two. Uh, let me talk about this one first. Um, the Christine de Pizan, uh, the book of the City of Ladies, translated from the French by Rosalind Brown Grant, uh, published originally in 1405. So it's a medieval book. Not an evil book, but a medieval book. Oh, I'm so funny. Um, anyway, so Christine de Pizan, was a femme de lettres um, and she was annoyed about uh, the sexism and the misogyny of her time and so she wrote this book um, after having read one of the many male books that basically say women are stupid and they don't have a brain or not even half a brain. Uh, so she constructs this city of ladies with all various um, uh, real life women, mythical figures, invented figures to populate the city, showing how extraordinary women are or can be. It, it was interesting, but the point is, of course, that I missed, I would say, 80% of the references that she makes to other books by men. Uh, because it was a reaction book. So it was interesting as a, um, a, a work of literature, proto-feminist, so to speak, of the 15th century, but I wouldn't say it was a, a great read. Um, and in many ways, this also goes for the other classic, the last one I finished, Margaret Cavendish, The Blazing World, and other writings, and I only read The, the Blazing World, which is uh, her 1666 book, sci-fi, I, I always call it one of the first sci-fi novels, but it's more um, a speculative fiction. So you have this uh, woman who um, is uh, uh, kidnapped by a guy who thinks he loves her. <laughs> that, that's what guys do. And then uh, uh, put on a ship, but there's a shipwreck because they sail to the North Pole and all the guys, including the kidnapper, dies. But she survives and she, at the shore, she encounters uh, the sort of a gateway to this strange world where people, um, animals, sort of animal people live, uh, you know, fish people, and she is uh, uh, selected as their new queen, as their empress. And she rules that world. And most of the book is about the world and the various species that live there uh, together in harmony. Um, what I hated about the book is the fact, I, if, you, if you follow me for longer, you know how I hate this kind of densely populated page where there is nothing to rest your eye on and, you know, no paragraph, no, I, I just can't deal. 
But anyway, so it was, again, interesting. And I think Margaret Cavendish is certainly somebody worth exploring. Uh, she was a scientist, a writer, a, a very unusual woman for her time. Uh, I, I read two biographies about her. So she is interesting. And so is The Blazing World. But please, Penguin, maybe we can do a different version that is not as densely populated. Anyway, so I finished 10 of the 12 uh, classics. Really pleased with that. Um, the next book I finished is a translated fiction um, from the Japanese, Amy Yagi, Diary of a Void, translated from the Japanese by David Boyd and Lucy North. Uh, the original was published in 2020 in Japan and this uh, English edition last year, 2022. And it was a completely a cover by. I was in a, um, in uh, uh, Holland where you have English language bookstores and I saw this and I thought, oh, translated Japanese sounds interesting. It won a prize. So I bought it. Um, and I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. Uh, it's a debut novel, by the way. So I'm always a little more lenient when it comes to debut novels because writers have to, you know, start writing at some point, And if you are very harsh, uh, they might not go on. But the premise is we have this 34-year-old office worker, Shibata, um, and she is in, in current day Japan, and she experiences the common, you know, sexism of the office. She has to do the coffee. She has to clean up um, uh, the the ash trees after a meeting, the, the, the typical stuff. Um, and from what I understand, the Japanese society is certainly not less sexist or misogynistic than Western Europe. Um, and at some point, the premise of the book is she is just fed up with cleaning after guys and not taking seriously. And so she says to her boss, I can't uh, clean those cups. They make me, it makes the smell makes me sick because I'm pregnant. So she invents a pregnancy in order to gain status. And the book then explores the uh, nine months that follow where she experiences uh, or w exploring, you know, the um, the importance that society puts on women as the ones giving birth, but not in a good way. So you gain status as a woman in this novel because you fulfill your duty. You are, you know, pregnant. So I thought that was interesting, but it, it didn't quite, this, the premise didn't quite carry the book all the way, I would say. But still, it gave me, as a Western uh, reader, uh, interesting insight in Japanese society and in this whole idea about women, um, the role of women in society and the, um, the way that we still think that women uh, are mothers. And if they are not, they don't do what they should do. Um, but on the other hand, it it was, yeah, it, it just, it wasn't, you know, mm, it was good, but not, you know what I mean. But I would still recommend it, certainly if you are interested in reading uh, about Japanese culture. And then the last fiction book of the year uh, was Susan Abulava uh, Against the Loveless World, which was published in 2019. And Susan Abulava is one of the uh, American Palestine writers that I want to explore. Uh, and this is my first book by her. Uh, I have two more books on my uh, list to read for next year. This one is I thought was interesting because you have NAR, um, N-A-H-R, uh, looking back at her life. She is in prison. 
Um, uh, she's a Palestinian woman and she is in an Israeli prison as a terrorist. And she looks back at her development as a, a woman, a refugee in Palestine, um, the, the hardships uh, she came across, not only because of her refugee st status, but mainly because she is a woman. So there is a lot of sexual abuse, uh, rape, misogyny, sexism in the book from all types of men, not only uh, Israeli men, please. Uh, it's also in her society, in the Palestinian society, where she experiences uh, quite heavy sexual abuse by her fellow Palestinian men. So I, I thought it was interesting, uh, this premise of the looking back, and it, it was very nicely structured and well written. It was a good, I would say a very good book. Maybe not, maybe my expectations were that it would be fan-fucking-tastic, and I didn't think so. It it was, but it was still very good. In Goodreads terms, I think I gave it four stars, so that that's still really a good book. And if you are interested in exploring um, you know, um, uh, life as a refugee, in particular Palestinian refugee, I think this is certainly worth your time. And I will uh, come back to this author with the other books that are on my list. And then the last two books of the year were both nonfiction. First, I read um, over Christmas, the Christmas holidays, I read this Tome, Emperor of Rome by Mary Beard, which was gifted to me uh, for my birthday by Kim from Middle of the Book March. Um, and Mary Beard is a very well-known British um, historian, and she, her focus, her research focus and writing focus, because she wrote really many books, and they are all quite heavy, <laughs> uh, about Roman, ancient Rome. So her, her most well-known book is probably SPQR about the whole Roman Empire development, fall and rise, rise and fall of the Roman Empire. And this one focuses specifically on the emperor. What does it mean being an emperor? And it covers uh, Julius Caesar and then 200 years until, uh, I think, uh, 240 or, uh, or something. But it's not a chronological tale about all those emperors. They were like many, many because they were killed after two years or there was a kind of palace revolution or something. So it, it was not, I mean, being an emperor was not a secure job position. But what she does is she looks at certain topics. How did the emperor live? It, like houses, architecture, she describes discusses that how what did they eat uh what does it what how did they govern uh travel so it's more if you if you want the mundane aspect of being an emperor and i thought it was absolutely fascinating mary beard is a fabulous storyteller um it's really engaging it is long and detailed so you you need an, a basic interest in that time and in the life of emperors in ancient Rome. If you don't have that, this is not the book for you. But if you do have that and want to have a completely different look at what it meant to be an emperor, I think this is this is fabulous. It's really fabulous. And then my very last uh, read of the year uh, was another nonfiction, The First Word by Christine Keneally, published in 2007. And I thought, you know, first word, last word, kind of fits. Yeah, I don't know. It, it just, it made sense to me to read this book as the last book of the year. And it is The Search for the Origins of Language. I thought it was absolutely fascinating, well-written. Um, it covers um, the modern linguistic journey, let's say from Chomsky, uh, you know, to Lieberman and unfortunately also Pinker, whom I really dislike because he is a sexist a-hole 
Excuse me for all your pinker fans out there, but I really, really despise the guy. But anyway, he's not that prominent, thankfully. But it, it shows the development of how did people, linguists, think about uh, the development of language? What can we learn from animal language? Um, and it's fascinating to think about how did we come up, how did um, creatures, not only human beings, but creatures in general, come up with language and communication, whether it's signing or sounding or what have you. Yeah. I will say this obviously stops because it was published in 2007. So it doesn't cover the latest developments, the last 10, 15 years. And there a lot has happened since this book was published, but still as, um, um, as, a an overview over the journey that we took in order to learn about how we developed a uh, language as as humans, I think it, it was really, really fascinating, and I it was a joy to read. So I ended the year strongly, which is always great, and I hope the beginning of next year will just be as strong. So the last books of 2023, and I also want to take a minute to thank you all uh, for watching my videos, commenting on my videos, subscribing uh, uh, to, uh, to my channel, going with me on this uh, reading journey in 2023. I am really, really happy um, for all of you watching and commenting. And thank you for sticking with me in this year. And I hope you will stick around next year. And I hope we will together, we will have a fantastic reading year. I wish you all the best uh, for the New Year's Eve going smoothly into the new year. And I will see you next year, maybe on Wednesday, I'm not sure yet, uh, but certainly uh, next Sunday. So take care and happy new year.